Steve, how long have you had that guitar? What time is it now? <laughs> I bought this new in 1967. It's a 66 D44. Am I, am I, am I on? I guess I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to push it up just a little bit. Okay. I, some things got changed since our last concert, so that's why I was up there messing around. Sorry about that. At your expense. But is that the longest you've owned an instrument? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I had a guitar before that was like a $15 special or something. I don't know what happened. Is that what you started out with, a little $15 special? Oh, probably. Yeah. Is that the best advice you can give people is buy a $15 guitar to start with? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Steve's, Steve's been at this a long time, and uh, I don't know that you have a, a large collection of instruments, but I'd, I'd guess you don't. I really don't. Yeah, you, got, you have a bass because you well, play bass quite bases. a bit. Three okay. bases. Yeah. Do you have a stand-up? No. No stand-up. That's up too bass. much work. They're yeah. hard to fly with. That's that's true. Let me get over here where I can look at you here. There we go. And uh, when you first started playing, did you have any inclination to write songs? From the start? Yeah. No. Uh. -uh. No, no, no. I just got started in the uh, back in the big folk scare of the '60s, and uh, started trying to play when I was I don't know, 13 or 14 maybe. I just wanted to play some folk songs because it was that was what was popular was folk music, and you know. Yeah, all all the guys were getting girls with folk songs in those days, right? <laughs> well, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just wanted to. Um, I just wanted to, eventually, I wanted to learn some Gordon Lightfoot songs. That's what I wanted to do. Did you? Yeah. D do you still He never learned any of mine. <laughs> but I listened to so much Gordon Lightfoot that yeah. that's what made me want to start writing because I, I absolutely fell in love with what he did. Do you recall what the first song of his that you learned was? Oh, golly. Take notes because if you're mm. going to learn to play guitar, you're going to need this. Well, see the thing about the thing about Gordon Lightfoot. I don't remember what for, what the first song was of his that I learned. Um, Ribbon of Darkness, maybe. Good one. Good one. Ribbon of Darkness, Darkness over, over me. me. Yeah, that one. When my true love walked out the door. When did you, when you, when you started writing songs? How did you know? That you had a winner with with uh, with your first successful song. How did you know that? You mean when I had something that didn't suck? Is that what you meant? Well, not <laughs> <laughs> Steve wrote "Walk in the Irish Rain," and we knew that it was a success when we heard everybody else recording it and didn't list him as the writer. They were listing it as traditional. And we and we knew well. He got ripped off of a lot of money. I gave up on that one. I mean, I, I wrote it in '91, and uh, I, I guess people thought that uh, a guy from Texas can't write Irish songs. Um, I don't know, but within six months of, of writing that and recording it with California, they were doing it in, in uh, British Isles. It, it got yeah. there that fast, and they started calling it a traditional Irish song, <laughs> which is flattering <laughs> but it doesn't do anything for your checking account you know and i fought that for years but it's it basically i just had to it's gone it's 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 in the world uh there's no telling how many people have recorded that or done it some it, people i it, get credit for it and but most people just call it a, a traditional irish song and it really costs a lot of money to go after somebody <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does. It really, and, unless you, especially if you got you know you got five hundred people out there that you're trying to sue, <laughs> it'll cost way more than yeah, you could yeah. ever get back. So. Unless you belong to ASCAP. <laughs> well, I'm actually a BMI writer. That's what I thought. That's why you haven't got paid. Almost forty years. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I contacted them. Yeah, I know that you're not a fan of BMI and ASCAP, and actually I'm not either because all they've done for me is just rip me off over the years. But. Um, but you don't have a choice. I, I made a big, uh, I make a bit, a big attempt with them to try right. to get them to do something about that song. And they basically patted me on the head and said, "Go away." <laughs> <laughs> so before the night is out, please do a walk in the Irish rain. Yeah, I've got a request for the Coralie. I haven't done the trilogy in a long time, so I'm going to do the trilogy. Oh, great, great. And I hope I remember it. 
I just write them, folks. I don't remember them, okay? <laughs> you know, Especially the, these days. The nice thing about Steve is he, he does respect other writers, so when he does somebody else's song, he always takes the time and the courtesy to let everybody know that it's somebody else's song. And it's such a treat to have you open up our concert series, yeah, well, Steve. It's my pleasure. You can. And would you come back? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow? <laughs> no, I got... Sorry, I got a gig in Washington tomorrow, but I'll be back on uh, Monday. Is that okay? <laughs> of course, I'd love to come back anytime. Steve Spurgeon, make him Thank welcome. Well, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate that. I think Ken's going to go boost a little level or two. Uh, we're talking about Irish stuff, so maybe I'll just do some Irish songs. I'm also going to get a little folky, uh, as, as if I'm not already. But since we're talking about folk music and we're talking about Irish tunes, I'll just do some Irish folk <laughs> tunes or something. This is a this is a song I wrote called uh, "If I Never See Ireland Again," and. Uh, if you've never been to Ireland, book your ticket now. It's one of those places that you have to see. How many of you have been to Ireland? Anybody have been to Ireland? One? Only one? We're getting on the edge of ringing there, Ken. Uh, it's, it, you just have to see it. Uh, there are two places that I know of that, that I don't care how many photographs you see, you have to go there in person, and one is Alaska. There's never been a photo taken of Alaska that shows you what Alaska looks like till you stand in the middle of it and you go, holy cow. And Ireland is the other one. You've never seen anything as green as Ireland. How many, how many different colors of green. And the people are wonderful. Uh, may have something to do that they're all awash in Guinness, but it, <laughs> great folks. They really, truly are. Have another spud. There was, a, <laughs> there was a, 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 an Irish couple that invited uh, uh, the band I was over there with to dinner one night, and it was the most charming thing. They are actually the inspiration for the song A Walk in the Irish Rain. It was this, uh, this Irish couple. And I'll never forget, uh, the lady met us at the door, held the door open for us. She had a starched white apron on and bowed to us and said, You're most welcome. <laughs> Have another spud. <laughs> A table full of food, and there were four kinds of potatoes, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> Molly stood crying, her tears flowing down like a storm on the cold Irish sea. She said, Jamie, me boy, oh, you're just bound to go. Don't you care for your mother and me? I said, Molly, you know you're the love of my life. I've no plan to leave you behind. But I'm America bound when my fortune is found I'll send for you both in good time And if I never see Ireland again Still have the love of my family and friends Carry me safe to that faraway shore Where I have a new life to begin If I never see Ireland again soil from my daddy's poor grave and a bag that holds all that I own. I'll trust to the Lord, the wind and the waves to guide me toward a new home. The posters all say that the West is the way to the land where my soul longs to be. Where the skies never end and the big rivers end and the country is wild and it's Free. And if I never see Ireland again, I still have the love of my family and friends to carry me safe to that faraway shore where I have a new life to begin. If I never see Ireland again, Colin, he said, let me know. ground for a man who can just pass the test if I never see Ireland again still have the love of my family and friends to carry me safe to that far away shore 
where I have a new life to begin. If I never see Ireland again, and if I never see Ireland again, I still have a love of my family and friends to carry me safe to that far away shore where I have a new life to begin. If I never see Ireland dropped his plug at the back out of his mouth fall right on the speaker board there. <laughs> this is written by a friend of mine up in, uh, well, Portland by the name of Matt Snook. And I sure hope I can remember this because I haven't done it in a long time and the uh, lady asked for this so I'm going to try it. Very cool tune. I love the little girl in this song because she's very precocious, maybe has a little attention deficit disorder, but cute. Halfway home, got our summer souvenirs, sand in our shoes, singing songs that no one hears. Roadside stand up ahead. Where Katie minds her daddy's store Advice is free with a smile You want ice, it cost you more She said, peaches are three for a dollar I learned to read when I was three I'll be nine years old come December Wax and string No, I don't care much for beans Black and bean We get cherries from our trees I'm a god a job in town But the boss don't know a thing Hide and seek is a game My brother used to play with me She says Peaches are three for a dollar my cousins live in Dundee They'll be here for a visit In the springtime And we've got some honey Made by honeybees Every day my Uncle Dale never had too much to say He came to stay for a while Now he lives in brother's room I wish his stories were real And his dreams would come true Peaches are three for a dollar You see that window with the lake that's where I was born Tomorrow we'll have corn Daddy says my pony Thinks he owns the place Peaches are three for a dollar I learned to read when I was three I'll be nine years old Come December and we've got some We got cherries from our cherry trees And with ten pounds of pears you get one free Isn't that a neat song? I love that. What's that? Oh, I did that last year? Really? 
That may have been the last time I did it, a year and a half ago. What a memory. All right. I just passed the senior wellness test right there. I Here's another one I had a request for, and it was written by another friend of mine. And this one you've probably heard, but there was a gentleman that wanted to hear this. And uh, I learned this song about 1967. And like everybody else in the folk era, I thought this was an old tune because it sounds very old. And then I moved to California, Southern California, in 1969, and one of the first people I met, and he's still my friend, is a guy named Steve Gillette. I don't know if you know Steve Gillette or not. And I found out that he wrote this song in 1965. <laughs> and so he just nailed it. He was trying to write something that sounded old, and he, and he, and he pretty well got it. So when I started learning this song in 1967, I had no idea I was going to wind up living one of these days right in the middle of it. Um, because, like I said, Vicki and I live in Carson City, Nevada. And when we moved there 16 years ago, the very first thing that I wanted to do was go take my guitar, go up to the Bucket of Blood Saloon in Virginia City and sing this song out of their picture window looking at the 100-mile view over there. So I did it.
about 20 years ago, I guess. Um, I was working, uh, I was doing a festival in Bishop, California. I don't know if you know where Bishop, California is or not, but uh, you, can't, you can't get there from here. It's one of those places like that. And I was still living in Texas then, and I had a festival to do out there. So you have two choices if you're flying out of Dallas. You can fly to Reno, and you can drive south four and a half hours, or you can drive to Las Vegas, and you can drive north five and a half hours. So uh, the tickets to Vegas were cheaper. So I flew into Las Vegas, got my rental car, drove five and a half hours up to Bishop. We had a great festival up there, the uh, Mill Pond Festival. It was the first time I got to meet Buffy St. Marie, one of my heroes. Ramblin' Jack Elliott was there. He was drunker than a boiled owl. If he'd have fallen down, he couldn't hit the floor. Went on stage, did the greatest set you ever heard in your life. Didn't know what planet he was on. But anyway, we get done with the festival, and, and it's time to, to go home. And, you know, I'm doing the shake and howdy with my buddies in the band. One of them is Dennis Kaplinger. I don't know if you know who Dennis Kaplinger is. Great banjo player. Oh, thanks, Mom. And uh, anyway, I was going, I was complaining. I was going, well, Dennis, we'll see you in a week or so, whatever we're doing next. And I said, man, I'm just I'm dreading this drive. Of course, I make it now all the time. Uh, but I said, man, it's just... Five and a half hours, there's nothing out there. It's just blah, 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 blah. And he goes, well, it's a great place to be if you're lonesome. And I went, ooh. And he said, I want co-writer credit. Because <laughs> I know a good hook when I hear one. So it's on one of my CDs. It's called It's a Great Place to Be if You're Lonesome. And if you look at it, it says Steve Spurgeon slash Dennis Kaplinger. So I gave him his co-writer credit. <laughs> And 
Ken was talking about our mutual friend, Carl Brownfield, from Goldfield, Nevada. And that's where I was last, last weekend, was in Goldfield. I, I went down to do the radio show with my buddy Carl on KGFN. KGFN. FM. There it is. Uh, the voice of the Old West out there in the middle of nowhere. Trust me, it is the middle of nowhere. It's south of Tonopah, about 25 miles. We all know where Tonopah is, of course. Anyway, I did his radio show on Friday night, and I, I did that a, a while back, and, and it was really kind of interesting because one of the, uh, it's listener-supported radio, and one of their supporters, one of their li uh, supporting listeners, was a brothel by the name of the Shady Lady Ranch. And... Uh, <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting after, I've been in this business 52 years, but I've never done a radio show that had a brothel as a sponsor, and I thought that was kind of interesting. So when I get back home, I, uh, I'm on my iPad doing Facebook, like I'm prone to do, and so I'm telling this story. I thought it was interesting. I'm typing it out to all my friends. On, I've got 4,000-something Facebook friends, so I'm going to go telling this story. And... Uh, I was mentioning that if you go anywhere in Nevada, you can literally be, there's a lot of nowhere roads, you know, that just look like they're going nowhere. And suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, will be a single wide trailer, an airstrip, and a red light. You know, Cessna's coming in for landings and things like that. And there's always, if you go past one of those places, there's always one car in the parking lot. And I was telling this story, and I'm th I said, it, I always imagine that it's, the, that it's the old gal that owns the place. And I envisioned some 90-year-old lady uh, with a face like a dried apple <laughs> sitting there chain-smoking camel regulars and drinking black coffee out of a mug that says U.S. Marines. I lost 25 Facebook friends just like that. hurt my feelings. I thought I thought that was a pretty funny story myself and I mean man people have lost their sense of humor. They just have. But I did what songwriters do. I sat down and wrote a song. This is called The Light's Still On at Trixie's and it's this is not gonna be what you think it is, folks. This is a song about redemption, it really is. Out halfway along your drive from Reno to Las Vegas You'll go right past Trixie's Ranch Used to be the place to spend your wages Trixie was the trucker's friend But all that was way back when she was real She ain't on the game no more Got religion back in 84 And quit hooking But she still keeps the coffee on And if you like it good and strong It's free for weary drivers And it's all conversation now the only love she shares is what's inside her A lot out back is plenty big So if you need to park your rig There's room to let her idle And you can rest your bones a while Take comfort in that same old smile And get a word of hope from her old Bible Cause the light's still on at Trixie's But not the one you used to see For 15 miles around That one's still up on the pole But it turned from red to gold And 
she never took it down. The light's still on at Trixie's, and it's the kind you don't forget. She place her hands above you, and when she says God loves you, God she means it. Esmeralda County Line Might be time to stop and see just how The old girl's perking If you can only honk and wave That's quite alright She knows you're out there working She knows your rig, she knows your name It's good to know there's someone praying for you door is always open and she just sits there hoping you'll come her way if life starts to unravel cause the light's still on at Trixie's but not the one you used to see for 15 miles around that one's still up on the pole but it turned from red to gold Never took it down. The light's still on at Trixie, and it's the kind you don't forget. She'll place her hands above you, and when she says God loves you, God she means it. She'll place her hands. She says God loves you God, she means it Thank you. All right, let's get to some more requests here. Who was it that said one of one uh, Grover Cleveland? I can't remember. One of our presidents said that. There were three things that that uh, get respectable with age, and it was politicians, hookers, and old buildings. <laughs> was that Grover Cleveland that said that? I'm not sure. All right, I'm going to try this. You asked for it. Or maybe I'll do this one first. Let's do this one. Hey, it's my show. My <laughs> show. I haven't done a train song yet. The song I wrote about, I don't know when I wrote this. It took me 30 years to write it, I can tell you that. Because the inspiration for this was a guy I met when I was 12 years old. And Never got over it. I just he stuck in my head. He was an elderly black porter, railroad porter. Well, I thought he was elderly. He's probably 50. I was only 12. <laughs> anyway, he was. Uh, isn't that funny how somebody will stick in your mind all those years? What did it for me was the fact that he had this great porter's outfit. You know, the cool little round cap and the shiny brass buttons, but I think the thing that hit me in 1959 in Texas, met him in a train depot, actually, in Mule Shoe, Texas, was here was a black man in the deep rural south who was very confident and very proud of who he was, and that made a, an impression on me. It really did. So, after 30 years, of having that itch I couldn't scratch. I decided that I would make up a name for him, I would make up a life for him, and I would write a song for him. And that guy went to his grave one day, never knowing that some 12-year-old kid from Texas was gonna write a song for him. 
You lay sights at one gold tooth, Elgin watch and a porter suit. He hustled bags for fifty years and he worked the railroad line. On overalls and cotton fields and spit shine shoes and rumbling steel. His life was made to roll on rails and that suited Muley fine. Cause his old pap never got so far as twenty miles from a sharecrop farm on Muley. He's seen shooting stars from Denver up to Maine. Of the gentle roll and sway, the sound of lonesome whistle made. He knew his calling from the day that he first saw a train. And nearly was a railroad man from Portland to Miami Sandy. Knew that in this great big land there's nothing like a train. He'd tell the children stories how the rails were laid by hand, and they knew his name from coast to coast. Nearly was a railroad man. Nearly was a railroad man. Well, he'd spend his off days at the yard, and he knew each engine there by heart. He could have taken one apart, but they never let him try. He said, "We've all got a gift to use. Some drive the train, some shine the shoes." The engineer. They get folks there, but me, I make them smile. He always spoke about the time when Roe Wilson rode the line and tipped him twenty dollars gold to carry till he died. But he'd praise the Lord if someone laid a quarter in his hands. God put him here to ride the trains, and Muley was a railroad man. Muley was a railroad. Muley spent his golden years explaining throttles, wheels, and gears, caretaker for the train museum at the Dallas County Fair. Tell you how the whistles blew, the engines roared, and the cinders flew. And when he got to heaven, he just knew they'd still be running there. He lived to be a hundred four, died in Fort Smith, Arkansas, laid to rest in his porter's cap, a double eagle for his fare. When I step off heaven's train, he'll have my bags in hand. With a smile and a yes sir right on time, Muley was a railroad man. 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 This is going to be interesting. Well, that was kind of pretty, wasn't it? Oh, golly. It's just, you know, now I'm going to have to go invest in more capos. Can you believe that? It just never fails can't have nothing nice all right somebody wanted to hear the Coralie and somebody else wanted to hear walk in the Irish rain which is kind of interesting because they're part of a trilogy okay when I got back from Ireland a number of years ago was when I sat down and started writing Irish songs at my table in Texas and I was going where is this coming from somewhere in my DNA an Irish sailor is lurking in there somewhere. I don't know where it is. But it's in there. This is, like I said, this is called the Irish Sea Trilogy. The first song is called um, Cookie's Penny Whistle. And uh, that's just an instrumental. Basically what you have is a young guy who is whistling his way down to the docks in the 1800s and he's getting ready to head to a life at sea. And he's kind of cheerfully going about his business. And the second song is called The Coralie. And in that one, our young man has, uh, had been at sea for a while, and he's found out that it's not all uh, what he was thinking it was cracked up to be. And uh, as, you know, this one has death in it, you know. This is Irish. Somebody has to die somewhere. So 
And then the, the third song is called A Walk in the Irish Rain. And in that particular song, our young man has grown old. He's given up his life at the sea and he's coming back home to the faithful wife that stood by him all those years. And you wind up with the, the strangest thing of all, which is an Irish song with a happy ending. Doesn't happen very often. So here we go. Irish Sea Whip, if I can remember this. Penny whistle. And 
we'll bring Coralie home. With God as our guide, we'll skim the tide and then bring the Coralie Sun goes down or Dublin town, the colors last. For hours over the lights come on the nights, a song and the streets all turn to gold. A gentle mist all heaven kissed, like your drops on an angel's wing. Don't you know you'll cleanse your soul with a walk in the Irish rain? Oh, Catherine, take my hand, I've got three pounds and change. And I'll sing you songs of love again, and when I get too drunk to sing, We'll walk in the Irish rain Forevermore I've stepped ashore My sailing days are over Roll through time and tide And by your side together we'll grow I threw my sea bag in the bin And brought these pretty flowers Kiss me, Kate, we'll celebrate before the bloom is gone. And oh, Catherine, take my hand, I've got three pounds and change. And I'll sing you songs of love again, and when I get too drunk to sing, we'll walk in the Irish rain. And they start to play Time stands still while they sing their fill Oh shout till the break of day Sweet little lady with a glass of stout Sipping it down till the fog runs out She'll help her old man home again With a walk in the Irish rain And oh Catherine take my hand I've got three pounds and change And I'll sing you songs of love again And when I get too drunk to sing We'll walk in the Irish rain Oh, Catherine, take my hand, I've got three pounds and change. I'll sing you songs of love again, and when we get too drunk to sing, we'll walk in the Irish rain, we'll walk in the Irish rain. Thank you. Traditional. Yeah, that's a traditional Irish song, yeah. <laughs> well, at least I wrote one song that will outlive me because people will be doing that one for a long time. All right. I mentioned the old folky thing. Any other old folkies? There'd be a couple of old folkies out there. Come on now. Just nothing but Led Zeppelin fans? Is that it? No. Oh, old fogey. Well, me too, but. This is the song that made me want to learn how to flat our finger pick. You know, it took a while I was just doing that. Uh... You know, I'm like, in, I'm like about 18. I'm trying to do this. And I'm going, I, I, this isn't working. You know, and suddenly that double thumb dropped in. It just went, it just, suddenly I was, I, just, I was doing all this other stuff, trying to figure out how to finger pick, you know, and just one day it just went, and I went, I can finger pick. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. It was like God said, Pow. and I went, thank you. Anyway, this is a song from one of my, uh, well, one of my favorite folk groups. Uh, it was a duo called Bud and Travis. Anybody remember Bud and Travis? I'm the only one that's old enough to remember that one. This song uh, came out uh, on an LP in 1961. So we're going back here a little bit. But I love this tune. I 
I really do. They're written by Travis Edmondson. A long time back and a long time gone. I loved a lady in the dew of the dawn. When the days are many and our hearts were free, I still hear my lady's love. Are you wondering, my lady? Or are you wondering, my lady? Or are you wondering, why'd you leave me alone? Why'd you leave me alone? She seems to speak with a lonesome sound. With the cold. Hear her call through the pouring rain. Won't you set me free? Won't you ease my pain? Oh, my lady, where are you wandering? Oh, my lady, where are you wandering? Oh, my lady, where are you? Why'd you leave me alone? A long time back Long time gone. I loved a lady in the dew of the dawn. The eyes I loved and the lips I kissed were made of moonlight and winter mist. There's a wild lady. Where are you wandering? Oh, my lady. Why'd you leave me alone? Why'd you leave me alone? Why'd you leave me Jackson Brown, he couldn't be here. I am. Will and Will. Oh yeah, you're right. Same era. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of us about that same era. I'm gonna keep doing this. I guess I don't know what else to do because you know every time I, I read the news now, another one of my contemporaries has pitched over. I always go, well, moved up one. <laughs> Sometimes. Croaking is a great career move. Yeah. Worked for Elvis, didn't it? I don't know who asked for this. But... You're a kid, adults are always busting your hump. To do your homework and don't sit there like a lump. They don't want you to party or have your fun. They say they didn't do it back when they were young. So if you work hard and you Might wind up like Donald Trump Or would you rather play the guitar 
Bring your money home in a jar From a coffee house or a bar Or would you rather get a job? A job is the thing that makes you get out of bed And work every day until you're dead Your back is aching, your mind is numb can't hardly wait until the weekend comes But if you don't want to starve or beg or rob You best go out and get a job Or would you rather play the guitar Drive four miles and miles in your car And pretend that you're a big star Or would you rather book The agent is the one who gets his 20% What he says ain't exactly what he meant Cause he's got more ways to screw you than you ever thought Cause he's good at business and he knows you're not And then he'll sue you if you ever make it big Cause he's the one that booked the gig Or would you rather play the guitar For a living, party hard hard must admit it's kind of bizarre Or would you rather be the wife? The wife is the one who has to rescue our butts She's either a saint or else she's nuts She gets irritated and she gets annoyed Cause she's the one that has to stay employed So if you ever get the urge to wreck your life Become a guitar player's wife Cause all the monkeys aren't in the zoo They can be taught to play guitar too Cause I'm a whole lot better than you So even if you don't get far You could be worse off than you are You could be playing your guitar <laughs> uh, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here going through my through my uh, my tiny mind, trying to figure out something I haven't done in a long time, just to see if I can. It was doing so well. I know what the problem is. I figured it out a while ago. I have one of those, uh, I told you, I got just a hold of a bad set of strings. It happens. It really does when they don't. These are going into the old trash can when I get home. But I tell you what, if you go fishing, these bottom strings make great shark leader. <laughs> do this. I haven't done this in a long time. This is a song I wrote uh, back in, oh, I don't know, 83 or something like that. Anybody remember Gene Watson, the country singer, Gene Watson? A couple of you do, maybe? Well, this is a song I wrote. I was Nashville staff writer for a while, and I was... Uh, Signed to, to Gene's Publishing Company and Reba McIntyre's Publishing Company. Anyway, I wrote this song for Gene. He'd already had a, another hit with, uh, or had a hit with another of my song called Speak Softly, You're Talking to My Heart. And that was a, that's a big hit. Thank you, Gene. I needed the money. Anyway, I wrote this one for him. And it's kind of a Tex Mex thing. He's a, just basically an old car mechanic from Houston. That's what Gene is. But I wrote this tune, and he said, Man, I like that song. I'd like to record it. But I originally uh, wrote it with uh, being a Texas boy and, and kind of writing a Tex-Mex tune. It had some Spanish lyrics. And uh, although this isn't politically correct, you have to know Gene to know that he meant no harm from, by this at all. He said, But you're going to have to write me another verse because I don't speak no Mexican. <laughs> And I went, okay. And so I, I wrote him another verse so we wouldn't have to learn Spanish for this. 
I'm gonna try it. I haven't done this in a long time. I should tell that story too. <laughs> this was a this was a hit. This was the number one song in El Paso for three weeks. <laughs> it was number one other places too. But. but I could drink free at the El Moderno Cafe in El Paso for a long time. <laughs> Between you and this Mexican bird, I'm gonna fall. Help us, old lady, driving me crazy in a language I don't understand. You said it all. Sure is handy if you need a friend and I don't belong here your dark eyes keep warning and I'll leave in the morning but now please let me in oh Driving me crazy in a language I don't understand. You said it all. Here's the verse I had to write for him. Right We're crossing the border. Stepping over the line Drunk on yesterday's wine Still feeling the flame The guitars are playing a song That I've never heard And without saying a word You keep calling my name Whoa. In a language I don't understand, you said it all. Beat it home before Johnny Carson starts. Yeah. I love this tuning, by the way. I just, uh, I, this is what happens when songwriters have too much time on their hands. They sit around and figure out stuff like this. For all you uh, 
uh, people out there into music theory, this is just 151551. The reason I was out trying to figure out what this tuning was is because I was trying to find the, the way that Red Shea played Old Dan's records for Gordon Lightfoot. You remember that song? Get down Old Dan's records. Bring down Old Dan's Just, you know, I finally figured out what that was, and I, and I went, that's neat. And then I started trying to figure out how many songs I could do with that tuning and start writing them and that sort of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's Red Shea being Red Shea is what that is. It was cool, cool stuff. Pardon us, we're this couple of Gordon Lightfoot fans here. We'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> well, I got time for a couple of more, and I want to say thanks to, to Ken and KYAC. Uh, appreciate it very much being here. And his lovely wife, Jan. Of course, Jan is like my wife, Vicki. They are really the head of the operation, and don't make any mistake about that. Yeah, we need to get we need to get you a badge too over there, and of course all the people here at Trexler Farm. Uh, you folks are blessed. I don't know if you know that or not, but you you live in a wonderful place, and you've got uh, you know friends and neighbors around here that that are good to you and good for you, and uh, and you can come to Trexler Farm and hear music and and eat great food. And uh, I want to tell you how much I personally appreciate what you're doing right here, whether I'm playing here or not. Uh, it's very important in this day and age, I think, as crazy as the world is, that we get together once in a while and rub elbows and uh, maybe make some new friends and share some food and a little fellowship and a little fun. And you're supporting something, I think, that's important in our culture just by being here tonight and doing what you're doing. So from my heart, from Ken's heart, Thank you so very much. It's a privilege to be able to come here and do this for you, and I hope I get to do it again sometime. KYC, right there, there it is. 94.9 on your FM dial. I've been hanging out in town in this low down rain, watching good time Charlie friends driving me insane. Down on shady Charlotte Street, green lights all look red. Wish I was back home on the farm in my fair. If I can lose them thin and hard time, hell on Church Street blues. I found myself a paper friend, read yesterday's news, pulled it up page 21, and stuck it in my shoe. Gave a nickel to the poor, a good deed for. Got my old bill full to do it far away. I'll get myself a rocking chair. See if I can lose them then I'm hard time. Hell on church street. I had 
made some guitar strings The old black diamond brand I'd string up this starvation box And go and join some band Yeah, I guess I'll stay right here Play and sing a while Try to make me a little change Give them folks a smile I get myself a rocking chair See if I can lose them thin dime Hard time hell on church street blues Gonna get If I can lose them fan down hard time, hell on church street blues. Rocky's coming into sight I've been up half the night Driving this ancient car Windows are down I've been letting out The steel guitar Out to the range Where the rivers run Onto the plains Where the wind and the sun Comforting mother and son When I'm not around In the hills I'll pray on sacred ground That someday I'll lay this old guitar down From the start I was too good to quit Never good enough to get ahead of the game I met her one night Eyes full of light, the eternal flame Built her a cabin with a hand-carved door A medicine wheel to keep out the war Raging like a fire waiting for the rain to fall This old cabin stands A wrap of old Cheyenne Prayed to the great spirit To answer I'm putting this land Say wait And I'm coming home to stay And I'll be your sun dancer Again And tonight in the hills
Play the soul get you down To the living Thank you, folks. God love you. Thanks for playing along. Thanks, by the way. I appreciate that. Uh, I thought it was. I thought I was going to get rich. I'll tell you why. It's called Kodak 1955. And uh, I was talking to a lady that worked for Kodak, and I thought they were going to pick this song up. I really did. I thought you were going to start hearing this on TV. You know? That was back when people still bought film, <laughs> if you remember those days. But. Vicky and I are going through another uh, episode of downsizing. Have you ever tried to downsize? Oh, my goodness, yes. Okay, we've done it twice. The first time I did it, I filled up a 30-yard dumpster twice. <laughs> really? At my aunt and uncle's house because I had all of their stuff. I had all of my mom and dad's stuff. I had all of our stuff. And we were going to try to move to Nevada. And I had a 30-yard dumpster set, and I called the trash company, and I said, can you go pick this, come pick this up and reset another one? And they went, are you kidding? What are you doing? Building a skyscraper out there or something? Anyway, we're trying to get rid of more stuff. We're getting down to where uh, we can live in our car. That's our retirement plan. But uh, as a result, I've, I've, uh, when I wrote this song, I didn't realize that it was going to be so meaningful one of these days but uh, once again thanks uh, it's my privilege to be here and I hope we get to see you again we went so many, through so many boxes I'm telling you but this is the one we kept it was worn and tied for string, Mama carried it with pride, and handed that old shoebox down to me. Full of shiny photographs, a family love inside, reminders of a time that used to be. All the aunts and uncles, countless cousins, one by one. Emma in the kitchen by her stove. Uncle Elmore playing dominoes with Granddad and his boys. Cecil with a gym bug on his nose. I couldn't take a million dollars for that box of memories. It brings all the folks I love right back to life. How I long to hear their they don't speak Just little letters in the border Kodak 1955 Simple country family Raised up on the land Grateful for the things the land provides Gentle souls whose word was gold, they led a helping hand and knew the Lord was always by their side. And I wouldn't take a million dollars for that box of memories. It brings all the folks I love right back to life. And how I long to hear their voices one more time, but they don't speak. 
Just little letters in the border code at 1955. Sometimes when this fancy world starts closing in on me, I go where things appear more black and white. Daddy in that snap brown hat, he looked so strong and lean. And Mama sure was pretty in her prime. And I wouldn't take a million dollars for the books of memo. How I long to hear their voices one more time But they don't speak Just little letters in the border Kodak 1955 Just little letters in the border Kodak 1955 May the good Lord take a liking to all of you Thank you.